Hi there and welcome back to MA211. Let's go ahead and take a look at some Laplace transform and inverse Laplace transforms involving Heaviside functions. Um, in the book they're going to write things this way that the Laplace transform of a shifted version of the Heaviside function times a shifted version of f it's just e to the minus as times the Laplace transform of an unshifted f. And that's entirely correct and it's uh, very nice. It's probably not the way you want to remember things though and I think that these two alternate formulations do appear in the book so what I'm going to tell you is nothing secret or anything. I just want to point this out. Um, this is entirely equivalent to what's written up above. The Laplace transform of a shifted version of a Heaviside function times some function. It's equal to e to the minus as times a Laplace transform of a forward shifted version of the function. So what you have to do here is the Laplace transform of the Heaviside function. It sort of comes out and it's here. It's the e to the minus as. And then you have to shift f forward. This is a plus. It's really a plus and then you have to take a Laplace transform of that. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example. So let's see, the Laplace transform of a Heaviside function shifted by 3, so that's this guy here, times t, it's going to be, well, e to the minus 3s, and now I have to shift the function t forward by 3. So that's what's going on here, so I have to plug in t plus 3 everywhere I saw t and then Laplace transform. So it's e to the minus 3s times the Laplace transform of t plus 3 and then t plus 3, well I guess that's a typo, that's a 3 over s there when you Laplace transform everything. Okay, um, now the important thing, there, there is a, a big point here that people miss all the time. It's true that the Laplace transform of f of t plus g of t, that really is equal to the Laplace transform of f plus the Laplace transform of g. However, if you have two functions multiplied, it's not true that the Laplace transform of f times g is the Laplace transform of f times the Laplace transform of g. Okay, so don't be confused. That's why we have to have all these different rules, right? Because I can Laplace transform the Heaviside function on its own, no problem. I can Laplace transform t on its own, no problem. But I still don't know how to Laplace transform their product. So that's why we have to have these rules on how to Laplace transform their product, okay? So let's try another one. The Laplace transform of a Heaviside function shifted by 5. Well, the minus 5 becomes e to the minus 5s. Now I shift t squared forward by 5, and then that's it. So I plug in a t, uh, t plus 5 everywhere I saw a t up here. I square it out because then it's easy to see what to do, and then I take a Laplace transform. And I just want to point out, if you need to Laplace transform a Heaviside function on its own, you think of it as a Heaviside function times 1, so it would be e to the minus 4s times 1 shifted forward by 4, but 1 is a constant function, so you shift it, nothing happens, you get just 1 out of it, and Laplace transform of uh, shifted version of Heaviside function is a negative exponential over s. So Laplace transforming things involving a Heaviside function no problem, you get a negative exponential and then you have to shift the other thing forward and then Laplace transform it. Okay. When you want to inverse things and get something involving a Heaviside function, well you can do that also. The way I want to write it is this, that the inverse Laplace transform of a negative exponential times something well, what do you get? You get a Heaviside function from the negative exponential, and you get a shift from the negative exponential, and then you have to inverse Laplace transform the g part right there. So, so that's how you do it. Um, you've got to really pay attention to your negative signs here. 
Um, uh, I don't know what to tell you other than you just have to pay attention and make sure all the negatives work the way they're supposed to. Um, I'm sorry about that. Um, so yeah. Um, here's an example though. So suppose I want to inverse Laplace transform a negative exponential times something. Well, I get from the negative exponential, I get a Heaviside function and a shift. And then I just have to worry about inverse Laplace transforming this part. So I copied that down there. That part is easy to inverse Laplace transform. You get t plus sine of 4t. And then you have to plug in your shift and you get a Heaviside function shifted by 3 a t minus 3 and assign 4 t minus 3. Don't forget to plug in the shift. People forget to do that all the time and it's wrong. So let's just do one more. Again, in, um, this is pretty straightforward. So you want to inverse Laplace transform a negative exponential times something. You get a Heaviside function. You get a shift. And then you have to inverse Laplace transform the something. Now this time, inverse Laplace transforming the something uh, invo involves the first translation theorem, right? This denominator doesn't factor, so your partial fractions doesn't do you any good. You have to complete a square, and from that you get um, uh, shifted versions of the Laplace transform of sine and cosine, so you'll get negative exponentials times sine and cosine. Remember, we did this at the end of last week. And so let's see. Out of this inverse Laplace transform, you get negative exponentials times sines and cosines, and then at the very end, you have to do your shift. Don't forget the shift, and you'll get this. And that's it. Okay, and really, that's about it. Um, pretty straightforward if you've done everything else so far. Uh, Laplace transforming and inverse Laplace transforming Heaviside functions, really not a big deal.